Hello everybody, how are you guys? We're here in Pittsburgh, it's Fan Fest today, and uh, if you're a Steelers fan, and I don't know why you would be, you should be a Browns fan, but if you're a Steelers fan, you want to go down to Fan Fest today, Saturday, September 14th, 2019. Which brought to my mind the terrible towel, speaking of fan support, the terrible towel being such a big part of the Steelers Nation. It made me wonder, what's the what's the history of the terrible towel? And it's been around for as long as I, I can remember, but I couldn't believe it came about in the 1970s when I did some research on this. And it was a promotion to to uh, get people to have more awareness of a local broadcaster's commentaries and on-air work. It was a gimmick to promote a radio station, basically. And they were trying to think of a way that the fans could have something to cheer with that would also, uh, on the side, promote their radio station and, and in the, the specific broadcaster. And, of course, now it's a big, big part. You see those terrible towels, all the people in the stands at Heinz Field waving them around. Remember back at Three River Stadium, same thing, waving them around their head, whipping them around. And you're like, man, that's amazing how that came about. So back in the day, a radio station, as I mentioned, were kicking around different ideas that they could promote both the team and their station. They came up with some different ideas, one of which was... What about yo-yos? And they thought, ah, not that many people are good at yo-yos. Somebody thought, well, how about the idea of whipping pizza slices around? That way, if a piece broke off, then the other fans could just jump in the air and uh, see who who could get the biggest bite out of the piece. But the point was brought up that a pizza slice has a pointy point. The one end is pointy. And could be dangerous, get catches somebody in the eye. And then eventually they got around to the idea of the of a towel. And of course, the negative Nancys were like, well, a towel, yes, it's portable, yes, it's softer than a, a yo-yo or pizza slice, but People could whip it like there's everybody remembers that one kid in seventh grade that was an expert towel whipper and the damage they that uh, he or she did usually a he uh, because seventh grade boys are, you know, basically criminals. (laughs) And so the, the liability of that kind of came up and somebody said, well, a Steelers fans not going to whip another Steelers fan with their towel. They might whip a Browns fan. And there are some in Pittsburgh and some travel to the game. So that was a concern because those Browns fans walk around with dog masks on. They may not see the towel whip coming and uh, a, an expert towel whipper could could snap that uh, Browns dog dog mask right off their face. Uh, some of them wear those dog paws. They could whip those right off their hand. You know, you get a professional top-notch towel snapper, and they can they can hit hit you like a whip. They could knock things off your body, and so the Browns fans would be defenseless. Uh, was the thought, and they didn't want any more controversy uh, of Browns fans being targeted f- for supporting the Browns uh, here here on the road games here in here in town, much less on the road. But they thought, well, just make the towels. So they said, let's take it. Let's take a trip down to Bed Bath and Beyond and take a look at the towels and and think about this. Because the towels have to be color fast. They have to be able to take the printing. They have to be durable. They have to be portable. They have to be lightweight. They have to be absorbent. There's a lot of things. So let's go down there. They went down to the Bed Bath and Beyond. And just picture, you know, 9, 10, 12, 15 Steelers executives walking through the Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, touching the towels and saying, this one, this one would be perfect. This is the perfect size. And the other person saying, ah, oh, that's a, that's a bath towel. That's way too big. That's going to knock some, that's going to knock down a, somebody's going to be holding their baby. And then here comes this big bath towel whipping around. It'll knock the baby out of their hands. You know, it's too dangerous. 
So then somebody else said, yeah, but if you get bath towels, probably everybody else would throw the towel down on the ground and the baby would have a soft landing. And uh, there's always an attorney. There's always an attorney. And a couple of the Steelers attorneys were saying, no, no bath towels. It's got to be a, a small towel. All right. So they said, what about thread count? What about absorption rate? And they, anyway, it went back and forth at the Bed Bath & Beyond. And of course, there was only one person on staff and she didn't really know the products to that degree that they, she could answer absorption rates. I mean, who would know that? And, uh, you know, she was just working her way through Duquesne University anyway. She didn't want to have to deal with 15, 20, 25, 30 Steelers executives walking around the Bed Bath and & Beyond uh, and, and also radio executives. I mean, but those things happen and uh, probably a good lesson for her on how to, how to handle a pressure situation, et cetera, et cetera. So they settled on the towel that you, the size of the towel you see today. There's been modifications over the years and uh, made it a little bigger, made it a little smaller, testing different black and gold, different uh, uh, dyes, you know. But the question still remained, would it be a success? And people were on pins and needles when they first released it in the mid-1970s at a game uh, because they weren't, because, well, here's the thing. The, they tested it with some fans. They said, what do you think of this idea? And the fans overwhelmingly said, no, niet, okay, a negative Ghost Rider, because they thought it was a gimmick. And if any team is not a gimmick team, the Raiders are not a gimmick team. The Raiders are a lunch pail, uh, blue collar, get to work, quit complaining, don't talk. Never, never complain, work hard, do your duty, flag and country team. And gimmicks don't fly in Pittsburgh, okay? Gimmicks fly at, in uh, Oakland. Uh, gimmicks fly with the Raiders. <laughs> gimmicks fly with teams that need help, like the Jaguars. But remember, this was the mid, mid to late mid to mid late <laughs> 1970s if any team didn't need help it was the 70 Steelers think about this Chuck Knoll I think he came on board in like 19 uh, 1970 maybe the, the guy was a drafting hero he he, can't, he drafted like 9 10 40 Pro Bowl players in like three years like all those guys, Lynn Swan, Terry Bradshaw, all those guys. So why do they need a towel? They don't need a towel. That's what everybody was thinking. But like a lot of great ideas, you're always met with resistance at first. And so they decided to go ahead with it. And, you know, at first people were on pins and needles. But sure enough, the towels came out in that first game and people loved them. And the team won. Then they won again. Then they won again. And now the towel is part of the uh, the Steelers Nation lore. You can't think of a Steelers game without seeing 30,000 maniacs whipping that towel around. And now they find them everywhere. They find them uh, in, uh, they found a terrible towel in the space station. They found a terrible towel at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, the top of the Eiffel Tower. The top of the world of the uh, what should we call it? Empire State Building. They're everywhere. In fact, they found terrible towels in Inca ruins, undiscovered Inca ruins. How do you explain that? They found terrible towels in un previously undiscovered ruins of dinosaurs in Australia. How do you explain that? They found terrible towels in ruins of Alexander the Great battles that no one had ever excavated before. Archaeologists had never touched it before. They dug down three, four feet in the ground, found ruins of Alexander the Great battles and several terrible towels. How do you explain that? Well, one of the theories is that, of course, Carnegie Mellon University has more brainiacs per capita than any university in the country. And they have been rumored to be working on secret government projects for years, one of which might be time travel. 
And one of the theories is that a freshman who doesn't understand life quite yet, they still got that high school mentality, they're, they're not mature like a senior, somehow had too many beers and traveled, uh, broke into the time travel lab and grabbed a bunch of terrible towels and went prancing around through time on the Carnegie Mellon time travel machine, dropping towels everywhere. Because those terrible towels surfaced in excavations which had never touched the earth before. There would be no other way for that terrible towel to get into the archae uh, archaeological sites other than time travel. And so you know how freshmen are. They get too many drinks, too many beers, too many um, Iron City beers in them. And they do crazy things. And that's the theory now, the university did interview, there's always that student that when something, a prank comes about, they go to that person because everybody says, oh, it was probably Ted. Or that was probably Sally because a lot of times there's one student that everybody uh, blames when pranks happen because why? Because they have been pranking all along. So they're the likely candidate. So the university took a few students into some isolated offices and put the pressure on them. And they said, did you break into the Carnegie Mellon time travel uh, lab and drop these terrible towels in previous centuries? And uh, to, their, to their credit, not one student cracked. Not one student admitted it. But that's the standing theory. But the point, of the, the point of that for this particular video is that the terrible towel is an icon and the terrible towel represents the best of uh, Steelers Nation, supporting their team with enthusiasm, with courage, with conviction, and, and, and a nice, soft, absorbent, uh, high thread count black and gold towel.